Ok, donem la benvinguda a Matix Watercall, the director of the European Film Academy from January 2021. Uh, good morning, Matix. It's a pleasure and an honor to share this interview with you. Thank you for having me and a pleasure to, uh, to be here today. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me introduce you to our audience. Mathis has worked as a freelancer journalist, um, field production, especially signed in documentaries. He has been part of the International Documentary Festival uh, in Amsterdam, and he's been director of the Erlinal Talents Program from six for six years. And uh, now he is the director of the European Film Academy, and I think that the, uh, you are the director as well of the European Film Market, isn't it? Yeah, it used to be before the European Film Academy. Yeah, true. Okay. You are really busy, man. How do you do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I, I love film, so working in different things in film is uh, has uh, has been a pleasure, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. That's really nice. Okay, um, the Academy organized the European Film Awards and also is linked to the Lux Awards. But uh, perhaps it's not so well known uh, to the general public. Matis, can you briefly um, uh, tell us what's, or explain us what's the function of the European Film Academy? Yeah, so the European Film Academy is an organization uh, that exists uh, 35 years and it was founded by filmmakers in the late 80s that thought that um, European cinema needed an institution that would protect and step up and, uh, and help European cinema to become more visible. Mm -hmm. 35 years ago, we lived in a world in which people were afraid that television would take over from cinemas. Now we live in a world in which we are all afraid that um, AI and streamers will take over from cinema. So not much has changed. What has changed is that the European Film Academy started with um, 40 filmmakers that were members. And in the meantime, we have 4,600 members all over Europe, well-known filmmakers, but also filmmakers that are, um, we call everybody a filmmaker who works in film. So this ranges from film journalists to film editors and actors and um, screenwriters. So, so basically everybody who is working in European film. And we still do the same as in the beginning on a larger scale, of course, which is... Um, celebrating European film. We give the European Film Awards every year. We give other awards every year in partnership, for example, the Lux Award. Um, but we also do projects, for example, film education for young people who are interested in European film. Uh, we organize events and festivals, and we, yeah, we do all year round actually activities in 52 countries in Europe um, that focus on the promotion of European film for European audiences. So, um, yeah, we're busy all year round, so to say. And the Lux Award is one of those projects, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice task. So uh, what do you think that is the greatest achievement that the Lux Awards and the European Film Awards have achieved? Yeah, I mean, the Lux Awards are an, 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 a prize that we give together with uh, the European Parliament and the European Commission and Europa Cinemas. Mm -hmm. And it is a film that is picked by a committee every year uh, this year, uh, they picked five nominated films that are being screened in all the EU countries uh, and they're subtitled in all the official EU languages. So that means that these films have uh, a big visibility uh, in cinemas. Mm -hmm. And it's great for the films as well, because in all these subtitles, you can imagine, they can really work and reach audiences much better. Mm -hmm. um, the award ceremony is in April this year in Brussels. Um, all the five films will have a chance to win the Lux Award. Um, the European Film Awards is a different kind of award because that's really organized only by the European Film Academy. And we uh, organize this in December every year. This year it's going to be in Lucerne in Switzerland. But the Lux Award, but also the European Film Awards do the same. We, we basically give European films the chance to be seen by much more people, promote them, and to really make sure that uh, the filmmakers benefit from it, that they can speak to audiences, that they can um, have a higher visibility, whether it is in cinemas or in other platforms that we work with. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, both awards help with the aim of the European Film Academy with the partners that we work with. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what do you think, Mathix, that is the looks the, uh, that the looks awards are so important? 
Well, I think they're important because they're really um, they're really about what the audience thinks about European films. You know, the European Film Awards are given by the members of the European Film Academy. But if you're not a member from the Academy, you cannot vote for the winners. And that's the difference with the Lux Award, because it's really an award where everybody who lives in Europe can vote for. It's an audience award. And that means that, in principle, all the 500 million Europeans uh, can basically watch the films and say, well, I think that this film should win. And that's, of course, a big difference and also a big chance. And I think in the end, and every filmmaker, I'm not a filmmaker, I used to, to work as a producer, but I'm not a director of films, but I think every director of a film is very interested in seeing what the audience thinks about the film. Um, so that is what makes the Lux Film Award um, very special, and that's why we also work together with the Parliament, because the Parliament uh, of the European Union, the European Parliament, is of course also voted for by the people who live and work in Europe, the audience, so to say. So we work together with them and the parliamentarians and the audience can give their vote for the European uh, Lux Award uh, in uh, in April. Very nice task. Uh, Matthix, have you already seen the five nominees so for the Lux Awards? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, I've seen them. And they were also all um, in the selection of the European Film Academy last year. Uh -huh. Most of them were also nominated for a European Film Award and some of them have won European Film Awards. Mm -hmm. uh, if I look, for example, at the uh, at the titles of this year, um, the film Smoke Sona Sisterhood won a uh, European documentary last year, uh, but also the other documentary in uh, 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 the lineup of the Lux Award this year, which is uh, On the Adamant, the French uh, documentary, was nominated. And the other three films were nominated as well. So um, The Teacher's Lounge, uh, Falling Leaves, and of course, the Spanish film uh, Twenty thousand uh, species of bees and I must say I'm very proud of the selection this year for the Lux Award because I think each and every one of them are very different films from very different parts of Europe but all of them I think have to say something very much about the Europe in which we live today with all the different stories that uh, can be told from different parts of Europe and different languages in Europe um, they're not easy films um, some of them really you know like put their finger on Topics that are not so easy to tell stories about. For some people, also very new stories, maybe. And I think it's 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 a fantastic thing that we live in a part of the world, Europe, in which these films can be made. We can openly speak about things. And uh, the filmmakers are able to make their films because they get money to make these films. And I think the Lux Awards nominees this year really show that we live in a very special part of the world where uh, these stories can be told. So I think it's a... It's a fantastic lineup this year, and I'm very proud of it, as I said. <laughs> Matix, don't be shy. Okay. Uh, could you tell us which one do you vote for? <laughs> I will never oh. say that because <laughs> voting is secret. Voting is secret, but I would say that um, the five films, I mean, I, I can say something briefly about each film and so why I thought they were so specific, if that's okay for you. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, and I know that tonight uh, we will have the screening of uh, On the Adamant, so I'll mention that as the last one. Um, so let me start with the other documentary me film. I think Smoke Sona Sisterhood, the winner of the uh, European Documentary Award 2023. I think it's a very special film, not only because it's a film set in saunas uh, featuring the stories of women, but I think it's done in such a strong way by a very special filmmaker uh, from Estonia. So I think that's um, that really captured my heart when I saw it and I, I felt like I haven't seen a film like that before. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to 20,000 species of bees, I was really captured when I saw the film last year, The Bellinale, where the main actress of uh, the film, Sofia Otero, won uh, a, a golden bear actually for her, for her, sorry, a silver bear, for her, uh, for her, her, her work. Mm -hmm. I think it's very deserved. Um, the film was nominated as a best discovery for the European Film Awards last year. And um, I think that uh, Estibaliz Uresola really did an amazing job making a first feature film like this, uh, telling a very special, very, very vulnerable story, um, partly also in the uh, Basque language, which also makes it a bit of a primer, so that's also fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, the film of Aki Karismeki, what can I say? If you love the Karismeki films, you will love this film because it's such a strong 
you know, the, the work of Kari's Meki is always, it always feels like the films are set either 30 years ago, but at the same time, they could also be in two years from now because they're always mm -hmm. very modern. And at the same time, they're also very classic. Mm -hmm. And I think the two actors in this film are just wonderful. Um, it's such a human, it's a little story, but such a big story at the same time. So it's a very wonderful film. And if I look at the other film, um, the the Teacher's Lounge, which was just nominated uh, for the Oscars, mm -hmm. uh, a German film, small story in a way as well, about a teacher in the school confronted with um, theft and accu accusations. But at the same time, it says a lot about uh, topics that I think speak a lot to both young generations and um, uh, generations of people who are the teachers and how they deal with the issues that come up. It's a lot about how, it's a lot about tension in society between different groups in, in society. And I think this is really a film for today, not only for Europe, but for the rest of the world. So I'm very curious how the film will also do um, on the international scale uh, when it comes to the Oscars. Um, on the adamant, uh, to finish with, last but not least, I would say, is a film made by a grand master of documentary film, uh, Nicolas Philibert. Um, who has made so many very beautiful films. We all remember Etre Avoir, uh, one of his very, very strong films from, I think, almost 20 years ago. And this film, again, puts um, the spotlight on a group of people that normally is are marginalized in society. We don't see a lot of them. We don't hear a lot of them. And if we do, it's very stereotypical stories that don't show a lot of respect to people with mental illness. And I think the way he films these people and gives a very human portrait that's very moving. Um, I had so many times goosebumps watching scenes of this film uh, in which people tell their own life stories, in which we see them, how they live. And I hope that for this film, I think it's a very strong example that, that adds something about how we see each other, how we respect each other, how we create empathy for people that we live with, even if these are people that are normally a bit forgotten. And I think this, this film is really capable of, uh, of of us seeing people that we live with in our world in a different way and also treat them in a different way. And I think all the films together, and that's very hard for me to vote. I haven't voted yet. I will. It will be very hard to vote for one of the films because I, I really love all the films. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, um, briefly, um, what is the future of the European cinema and cinema in general? Well, the future of European cinema, you know, first of all, I hope that the future of cinema is that cinema will be able to continue to make in a way, as we can see in the five Lux films, uh, um, the, the richness of the stories, uh, the, 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 the capacity they have to really make us look at the world in different ways and embrace each other in ways uh, because we understand each other much better. I think that's really a power of cinema. For that to be continued to make in Europe, which means money for filmmakers, money for cinemas to be to show the films and um, uh, uh, support also for organizations like the European Film Academy to, to make sure that films are seen and noticed and, and get celebrated through awards. I think that's one thing that I hope will continue. Um, for European cinema, obviously, that is something I wish specifically for because on the one hand, European cinema gets a lot of support in many countries. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, I think European cinema is extremely vulnerable because when we look at the content of, of cinemas, it's very often non-European cinema that is dominating. And that's why I think it's fantastic that um, the work that you do also with the uh, Akira Cine Club is so important to really focus on European cinema because that's normally not done. Most mm -hmm. of the people in Europe don't know what European cinema means. Um, and I think that's something to really uh, yeah, to keep on working on. And that's what we try to do, what I try to do with my work. And um, I think it's fantastic that everybody who loves European cinema is connected and that together in the next 10 years, we really try to give European cinema more visibility because that's really needed and uh, it's really useful, I think. Um, Matrix, we see something in our audience. Uh, as a cinema club, uh, we see that the average age of the, our audience is like 50 years old. No, there is a huge gap uh, to fill in the ages between 15 and 30s. Uh, what can we do? Well, I think I think it's a very good point that you uh, address because because of the the last in the last 30 years, I think not enough has been done 
to reach younger audiences. And I think that is something that we really need to, to work on more. And that's also one of the reasons that the European Film Academy has started last year, the European Film Club. I think film clubs, especially for young people, I mean, also film clubs for people above uh, 20 or 30 or 40 are important. But I think especially also film clubs for teenagers are very important. And the European Film Club is a, a, a film club for teenagers, which is a, a digital film club. People can go online. Young people can go online and watch films in film club groups. Mm -hmm. um, it's not because I believe that the future is only online, but I think young people can be reached much easier online. And if we interest them for European film, and if they can speak about European film, and if they grow interested in European film, it will be more easy to then also ask them to come to cinemas or to show films somewhere else. And I think the European Film Club will help us in the next years to reach young people all over Europe much more. Mm -hmm. and to make European cinema for them interesting again. Because I believe that if you, at a young age, discover something and learn to love something, it's much easier to keep uh, loving something in the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And it's much more difficult to convince people in their 40s to say, hey, you missed European cinema for four decades in your life, but maybe you should discover it now. It might be uh, impossible. <laughs> it, it's, I mean, there, there's exceptions, maybe, but I think there are exceptions. Mm -hmm. And if you start loving something when you're 15, and you realize that European cinema really has something else to offer, as we can see with the Lux films, the really different kind of films, but very useful. And I think also for young audiences, very interesting. Um, that is a way, I think, in the future to also keep European cinema alive. So our aim is much more to work with younger people. We still love the, the people around their 50s uh, and, and, of course, want to keep them as fans of European cinema. But we should, I think, put... Uh, much more effort in also reaching out to uh, to teenagers in Europe. And that's something we started with and we'll do much more within the next years. Okay, uh, thank you very much for this task. Uh, Mathis, uh, thank you very much for serving us. Uh, we, are, we are delighted to be able to speak with you. And um, um, in, you are invited, if you came to Barcelona, to come to San Paul, to our cinema, whenever you want. Nice. Okay. Yeah. okay, perfect. Okay. Madix. Thank you very much. Thank you very have much. A nice, have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Exactly. Bye, Sandra. Bye-bye. Ciao.